Morning folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with the Pathfinder School and we're going to talk more today about trap triggers. Yesterday we talked a little bit about the figure four and we talked about the Paiute deadfall type trigger. Today we're going to talk about breakaway triggers or barber chair type triggers and we're going to talk about promontory peg triggers which are a modification of a barber chair type trigger and there's several modifications you can do to both of those trigger types for different applications in deadfall and cage type trapping. So let's get started. Okay, so what we have here is we have a split trigger device that actually is made from a fork that places our bait inside the trap. Again, angle is everything. We need this thing at a 30 degree angle or less. The longer this stick is, the better off we really are because we'd like to get that animal at least halfway into our trap and we need to keep the components as far to the front of our trap as we possibly can. But the way this trigger works is it is split in half here in a barber chair that falls forward as the bait stick is moved. So you're going to put bait on this that something's going to work out to get. It's high enough off the ground in this case that a chipmunk or something like that would have to reach up to pull it down to get it into his mouth. And when something like that happens and this moves, it doesn't take much to set that trap off. And the components are all laying out here on the ground beside the trap. Well, let's talk about how to set this trap. Okay, again, I'm going to try to freehand this today. See how it works out. It did okay yesterday for me. There is only one stick that's required for this trap. And it's basically just a wide branch from a piece of red bud. And what you're going to do is you're going to make two cuts in that branch. You're going to make one cut below the fork on the fork side or on the side that's going into the trap. And that's important because if you don't do it on the right side, it's going to bind automatically and the trap will never go off. So it's very important that this trigger break away in this direction. So you're going to make a cut here and a cut here. And all you should have to do then is bend the stick and it will split out. And you can trim it up. Now, you want this length a little bit short. So trim that off. So there's no way it can ever get in a bind or be a perfect fit right there. You don't want that. You want a little bit of space in there. But this top edge needs to be pretty well squared off at a 90. This one's not quite right, but it's pretty close. And this edge here, you want to be a hard 90 as well. And then you can just take the front of that stick and just round it off a little bit, sharpen the point so you can stick some type of bait on there, whether that be a granola bar, in the case of a chipmunk or a squirrel or whether that be a crawdad or something that, like that in the case of a heavier deadfall where you're going for coon or possum. Now to set this trap is pretty simple. We're just going to place our two pieces together and hold them with our finger and our thumb just like this. We're then going to lift up our deadfalling device and place this directly in the center as best we can at a bit of an angle but as close to the front of that dead falling device as we can get it. And then we just want to make sure that it's steady. And you might have to play with that angle just a little bit, but you definitely do not want that thing straight up and down because you want these items to kick out from under the trap when the trap goes off. That's pretty good right there. Okay, so we have our trap set up again. There's a couple really important things that we need to understand when we start to set traps like this. The first one is we need to understand that we don't want trap components underneath this trap after it goes off, especially in micro trapping because we're trying to smash or suffocate our game animal. Any trap components that are left underneath that trap are taking up space between the trap and the ground or the trapping device, the dead fall and the ground. We don't want that space in there. The way this trap is designed, when it trips off, this stick will kick into this stick as it bends and it will throw itself out from under the trap. And I'll show you that in slow motion. But that's very, very important to understand. Both my trap components are outside the trap and the trap is down. All right, this is the promontory peg trigger system and it is a split trigger type system 
with a point on the front just under the front of the trap where you're supposed to put the bait. The problem I see with that is A, the animal's not very far into the trap. B, you're also liable to trap trap components under the trap because there's really no kick out. Your barber chaired the opposite direction with this trigger as you were with the opposite trigger. This is a pretty good trigger type system for cage traps and things like that. But I'm not real fond of for deadfalls, although it must have worked because they found over 60 of these in a cave that were made by Native Americans. So they got it to work for sure. I don't think it's the best application for me or the best trigger for me, but it is a standard trigger that you need to know because there are ways to modify this to make it better for our needs that I'm going to show you in a minute. But you would have your bait on this point here so that when the animal touched that point to move the bait or to get at the bait, it doesn't take a whole lot of movement to trip that trap. But as you can see, all of my trap components are under the trap. Okay, so let's talk about this trigger. Same barber chair configuration. Cut one side of the stick, cut the other side of the stick, and split them off. Then you're going to take one, make it slightly shorter on this side, and point it so that you can put bait onto that point. And that is your trigger system, and it sits kind of at a little bit of an angle like this, forced open with the bait on it or wedged in between there, so the animal has to work the trap to get to the bait or get the bait off of there and that is the precedence of this trigger. I'm going to show you a couple modifications to this that I think make it better for deadfall devices. Okay, so what we're going to do to modify this is we're going to take a piece of string that is about the length or a little longer than our deadfalling device. And we're going to tie just a toggle, a large toggle on the back of that, and we're going to put that on the back side of our device, just like that underneath and pull it to the center. Then we're going to measure where that point is in the center and that's where we're going to tie our loop and we're just going to make a simple loop right there that we can adjust for the moment and we'll figure out where we need it and then we'll knot it off so that it can't slip. So we've got basically a slip knot right now that we can tighten from this side to make it smaller or tighter. Now we're going to put our device on this string and this string is going to act as our bait stick now because we're going to unwind this string a little bit because it is a rope it's a three strand rope and we're going to basically wrap our bait inside the rope back here three quarters of the way back in the trap or at least halfway back in the trap where we want it and then we're going to bring this promontory peg through the loop like this and then we're going to set our trap. So I'll take both halves, put them together with my string on there, just like this. And now I have created something that's going to trigger when that string is pulled on. I don't have to be quite as tedious with this trigger to set it back up. I can get it up here nice and square, just make sure it's not going to go anywhere. And I have the bait tied to the string, so the string has to move for the animal to get the bait out of there. And that's going to allow this trap to trip a lot easier, and the animal's going to be back further in the trap when he trips it off. Okay, so now we have our string tied here in a loop on our promontory peg. And when the animal goes back inside the trap and starts messing with that string, done deal. So resetting this trap, we're just going to pick the loop up with our promontory peg, come down and put the top half on our trigger just like this, pull it out to a tight line, set it on top in the middle, get our trigger adjusted where we want it. So we got a nice taut line there, just like that. Now remember, our animal's not going to be up here because our bait's tied in the back of this trap. So when he touches that line to get the bait or grab the bait or eat the bait or pull it to his mouth, he's going to set the trap off and now he'll be in the back of the trap instead of up here in the front. Now, the beauty of this trigger system is it will also work for a bird trap or cage type configuration where you have running lines here 
that are trip lines that run to the back of the trap, putting bait in the center of the trap, assuming that when the bird comes in, he's gonna hop the line to get to your bait and be trapped inside the cage. Now for something like this, you're gonna have two wires. You're gonna have one going to each corner, and it's just gonna be a loop. You'll take your promontory peg and you'll wrap it around that loop one time and center it so that it's pulling against both sides evenly, like this. And then you'll put your top portion on, like this, and pull it out tight. Again, you want that thing banjo string tight. Remember, especially with a bird trap, when you're using trip lines like this, you're going to need to have this cage fairly close to the ground, but you're also going to want your trap components to match what you're trapping and the height to match it. I don't want birds that are going to walk underneath this wire. I want them to have to jump over this wire. If that means I need to shorten the length of this stick to get these wires closer to the ground or get that cordage closer to the ground, that's exactly what I'm going to do. But I'm going to put that bait in the back of that trap so that either way when he's trying to get out, he's going to bump into this string and hop over it or duck under it Whichever one will usually set it off, but I'd rather have him hop over than duck under, so I'd rather have those wires close to the ground. Okay, folks, well, there's a quick video on two more trigger types that you can make quick, easy on the fly. Make several of them and camp at night. Utilize them the next day. Talked about the barber chair split trigger, and we talked about the promontory peg trigger, both for dead falling or cage type devices we use with the promontory peg as well. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business. For all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends, I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.